Seeking Alpha says sell. I do not agree. Welcome back investors. Today I want to talk about a stock that I've covered previously on the channel multiple times and this is an update video that was the most requested video for me to do. If you don't already know about Ascent Solar, it's worth checking out my other videos where we deep dived into a lot of what they do over the past few years, changes in management and basically everything that I felt was important to highlight to anyone considering investing. Now this video is mainly going to look at two articles that were recently published and I'm going to give you my thoughts on everything. And I'm going to point to actual proof of why I don't agree with what's been written. So in today's video we'll be looking at and discussing who Ascent Solar are and what they do, we will look at the latest Seeking Alpha article and a short ticker and a short ticker report article. I will give you my views and point to notes in the Q1 financial statements. Then we will look at other facts and I'll show why Seeking Alpha are simply wrong before I give you my final conclusion on Ascent Solar. Before we get into the video, if you like the content, it would be greatly appreciated if you could smash that like button. It takes a lot of time to do this research, so if you find any value in this video, please smash that button. It literally costs nothing, but it helps me out so much. Previous Ascent Solar videos have over 700 likes between them, and I really appreciate the support. It shows me that you want to see more videos on Ascent Solar, so here we go. It's 100% free, so hit that like button. Can we get another 300 likes on this video? Let's make it happen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification. So you don't miss out on any new content like this, it's 100% free and a great way to show your support for the channel. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Have you invested in Ascent Solar and what are your price targets? Leave a comment down below, now let's get into it. So who are Ascent Solar? I'm going to do just a one minute overview for anyone that's new. If you want a detailed view of the company, I strongly recommend checking out my previous video. Ascent Solar was formed in 2005 to commercialize their leading edge SIGS technology on flexible plastic substrate. Their technology is recognized as the future of the solar industry. Ascent has cemented itself as a leader in the manufacturing of innovative, high performance, flexible, thin film solar panels for both existing and emerging defense, consumer, electronic, space and aerospace applications. Ascent is the only manufacturer commercially producing SIG Solar on a plastic substrate with monolithic integration, a key differentiator that they say puts them ahead of other manufacturers. SIG's technology seamlessly integrates into the wings of unmanned aerial vehicles on the sides of satellites or carried in the packs of deployed soldiers so they can easily power their electronics on the go. From standard bare modules to the extreme SIG's technology, they offer customers custom solutions to meet any requirements. Their solar technology will not crack or shatter upon impact and continues to operate in cloudy or overcast conditions. Even if the panels get damaged, their technology allows for the flow of electricity around the damaged area. As well as their standard SIGS technology, they also offer a super light and extreme variant that has the high performance solar efficiency that they say no other thin film provider can match. Their mission is to design, develop, manufacture the ultimate solar technology and power solutions for remote locations and extreme environments, with the vision of delivering clear and innovative power solutions for everyone, everywhere. So guys, let's look at the most recent news articles. First, we have this article from June 12th, which I feel paved the way for the big one later that week. Short interest in Ascent Solar Technologies grows by 617%. Obviously, 617% is a huge increase, but as we can see here, there was short interest totaling 71,700 shares as of May 28th. But let's put that into perspective. This is a company that has over 18 billion shares. 180 million would equate to 1% of the float, so 71,000 is nothing. But the headline makes it look big when they say 600%. That then leads us on to the Seeking Alpha news article that came later in the week, in which they have stated that Ascent Solar Technologies could be on its last leg. ASTI and its solar panel business have been struggling for years. In Q1 they suffered another EBITDA loss. Cash burn was $2 million, a capital raise helped increase cash to nearly $4 million, and at the current cash burn rate, ASTI could run out of liquidity by year end. Hence, more capital, ASTI may not survive. So let's look at each of these points. So they've said here that the damage done by the pandemic may have caused irreparable harm for Ascent Solar Technologies. Now, if you've been following my videos over the last few months, you'll know that Ascent Solar Technologies was in trouble long before the pandemic. 
this is a non-point. However, the author has noted that the company has struggled for years and this is true. In 2020, the company was practically dormant due to the knock-on effects of COVID-19 and delays in attempts to raise new capital and restructure the business. This is inaccurate. The company was practically dormant because as we'd seen already, they laid off about 95% of the workforce, they sold their manufacturing facility and they had to revaluate their business just to survive. In Q1 2021, ASTI generated revenue of $165,000, gross profit was $92,000, up from a loss of $68,000 in the year earlier period. The company suffered an EBITDA loss of $1.2 million versus an EBITDA loss of nearly three hundred dollars in Q1 2020. Until the company can generate a positive EBITDA, it will not be able to cover its interest costs. There is some truth to this, no company can continue to rack up losses forever, there needs to be a plan in place. A sense liabilities of $16 million exceeds its assets of about 11. The company has negative equity of 5.4 million, but as we've seen before, it was far worse in previous quarters than this. The author has noted that Ascent raised 5.5 million of equity in Q1, which helped the balance sheet immensely. Cash and cash equivalents increased to $3.7 million up from 168,000 in Q1 2020. This then continues. ASTI suffered a cash flow from operations of $2 million in Q1 2021. I expect more cash burn throughout the year, even if ASTI improves its operations, it could find it difficult to cover its $562,000 quarterly interest expense. So here comes what I consider to be the biggest question of the lot. Is Ascent Solar a going concern? There is also no assurance that ASTI's current liquidity is enough to sustain it over the long term. On page 25 of its Q1 2021 SEC filing, the company could not give assurances it would remain a going concern. Now this is very important stuff. The company has continued limited PV production at its manufacturing facility. They do not expect that cash flows will be sufficient until it has fully implemented its product strategy. This is not a company that is aimlessly running to the brink, they have a strategy. And it's very important to remember that this strategy is in place. As we've seen from my previous videos, the new CFO has been working tirelessly over the past few months to get all their accounts, all their filings, absolutely everything up to date. So why would they be doing all this if they had no plan? Why would they be wasting their time and their money if there wasn't a goal at the end of it? Additional projected product revenues are not anticipated to result in a positive cash flow position for the year overall. As such, cash liquidity would not be sufficient for the next 12 months and will require additional financing. The company has begun activities related to securing additional financing through strategic or financial investors, but there is no assurance the company will be able to raise the additional capital on acceptable terms or at all. If the company's revenues do not increase rapidly and or additional financing is not obtained, the company will be required to significantly curtail operations to reduce costs and or sell assets. Such actions will have a likely adverse effect on the company's future operations. I feel like I've read this paragraph in every single quarterly report of every single pre-revenue stage company that I've covered. But let's not forget that Ascent have been here before. They are in this position now because they've previously had to significantly curtail operations, they've previously had to reduce costs, and they've previously had to sell assets. This is nothing new. Finally, the author goes on to say that a sense valuation is nonsensical. He compares the company to two other solar companies, First Solar and Next Era. I'm not going to go into this because it's not fair to compare these companies with each other. This comparison does not give any sort of fair view at all on any of these companies. Before finally, the author states in his conclusion that ASTI is on its last legs, sell the stock. Now, there's a lot in this article, and there's a lot that's been left out of this article. So let's take a look at this for a moment. The author likes to point to the fact that Ascent have only generated revenue of $165,000. But I want to point out that from this, they have managed to turn a gross profit of $92,000. So this is something from the notes to the Q1 financial statements. Management believes our factory is currently significantly underutilized and a substantial increase in revenue would result, would result in marginal increases to direct labor and overhead included in the cost of revenues. As such, management's focus going forward is to improve gross margin through increased sales and improved utilization of our factory. We are currently pursuing high value PV markets. In other words, these costs of revenue will not increase in line with revenue. 
which is the opposite of what this author is trying to say. The author is saying that if you double revenue, you're going to double the cost associated with that revenue. But management is showing here that they have greatly increased their revenue while they have only marginally increased their costs. But the future of this company is dependent on them greatly increasing revenue, which leads us on to something else that the author has not mentioned in his article. Last month, Ascent Solar completes delivery of a major contract to supply its newly designed Hyperlite 10 film modules for high altitude airship application. Now this is revenue that has taken place after Q1, so it is not included in those Q1 figures. This shipment represents the third and largest order from the customer since March 2018. The customer is the developer of the world's most advanced unmanned airship operating in the stratosphere at an altitude greater than 60,000 feet above sea level. The robust, versatile and solar powered high altitude platform aims to provide several services including high speed internet direct to device, enable high resolution real time earth imagery and facilitate other humanitarian endeavours. Ascent's PV modules have been undergoing extensive evaluation for years including protracted and demanding ground simulation test as part of the 10th Missy T flight experiment ab aboard the International Space Station. Another thing that we've spoken about in my previous videos is also mentioned here. The upcoming Lisa T demonstration being slated in for launch in 2022 will also include Ascent's flexible SIGs as part of its further photovoltaic experiment. Now these are huge demonstrations of the direction in which Ascent Solar is trying to go. While other companies are looking at solar roofing panels or solar power for vehicles, Ascent Solar is targeting mega revenue industries and contracts with the likes of NASA. And then we can see here, this contract is by far the single largest PV sales contract in the corporate history of Ascent Solar, which follows the success of multiple large shipments of such customized high voltage super light thin film for high altitude applications. The contract is not only significant in value but also underscores the power of Ascent's proprietary technology to address these rapid emerging and growing premium PV markets. We hope that this contract is only the tip of the iceberg as the project, if successfully launched, is expected to be rolled out on a much larger scale in the future. None of this sounds like the talking of a CEO of a company that's on its last leg. This is more like the talk of a CEO of a company that is on the verge of major breakthroughs, on the verge of finally achieving what they've been working so hard to achieve over the past few years. So if these major contracts do come in and revenue is to greatly improve, as we've seen already, profit will also greatly improve. Now moving on, at no point in the article does the author actually make reference to how Ascent Solar have actually survived this long in the first place. So let's look at this article from May, which discusses some of the things that I've spoke about in my previous videos that I feel I need to discuss here once more because it seems more relevant now than ever. This article discusses the relationship between Ascent Solar, Tube Solar, Burnt Forge and Crowdex. I'll put a link in the description to this article because this covers a lot of what's been going on over the past few months. So as they've said here, ASTI, an early pioneer in flexible solar modules, could not be in a stronger position as solar energy is currently seeing an enormous global boost. ASDI is emerging quickly as the darling of small caps ever since the company received a $2.5 million investment from Burnt Force via Crowdex and Tube Solar. A well-known German entrepreneur with hundreds of millions of euros who has now become the controlling shareholder. He has quickly brought on top-level management team of major international executives including Michael Gilbraith as CFO and Will Clark as a Class 2 director. And as we can see here, he's the 60% owner of Tube Solar and he now holds stakes in companies such as BF Holding, Deposit Solutions and Flatex, the biggest online broker in Europe valued at more than 1.2 billion euros, as well as many more other companies. As we've already said, Ascent Solar seems to have a plan in place to turn the company around. And I do not believe that with a majority shareholder being a veteran entrepreneur, that Ascent Solar is on its last leg. Another thing that I don't believe that a company on its last legs are usually doing is actively seeking new employees. Victor Lee has previously spoken about Ascent pushing for new sales and expanding the sales and marketing teams to achieve this. Just look at this from today on Indeed.com. Ascent Solar are advertising for positions for sales support specialists. This is not something that failing companies do. 
So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Before I give you my final thoughts, if you've watched all the way through, then please hit that like button. It takes more time than you could imagine to research these companies, and I hope you appreciate all the time it takes. I'm trying to bring you useful information so that you can make informed decisions regarding stocks. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and bell notification. I'll be running a competition later this month for subscribers. Like and subscribe to take part. More details coming soon and leave a comment down below so that I know you've liked and subscribed. So what do I think? There's so much going on at the moment for Ascent Solar. I believe the article written by Seeking Alpha is the prime reason for the share price to have dropped as low as it has gone. And to be honest, at the moment, without people digging into the actual facts, I think the share price could drop even lower. But I think that the author is wrong. Go back to my first video on Ascent Solar. I stated in that video that when I first looked at Ascent, I thought it was nothing more than a pump and dump. However, the more I researched into the company, the more I realized that my first assumption was totally wrong. I think that the Seeking Alpha article has been written by someone who either has an agenda to drive the share price down, or more likely, they simply have not done enough thorough research or been following the company for long enough. The article has no mention of the largest contract in a sense history being recently fulfilled, nor has it any mention of the fact that the majority shareholder is a billionaire investor. I simply believe the author is not actually aware of this. Despite all of this, as I say in every video about Ascent, this is an extremely risky investment. One thing that the author of the article did get right is about the market capitalization. $400 million for a company in its current state is extremely high. But we're investing in the company's future and its patented technology that they have. It is still a very risky investment though. As always guys, this is just my opinion. If anyone is thinking about buying into the stock, I encourage you to do your own research and if you find anything of interest that I have not mentioned in my videos, leave a comment down below and I'll look into it. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Thanks for watching the video. What are your thoughts on the future of Ascent Solar? And do you agree or disagree with the points that I have made? Comment down below and I'll catch you in the next one.